Hey, Jake with BNH. I'm at Nikon's secret headquarters because we have a couple of exciting new announcements from them. And I'm alongside here with Mark, senior product manager here at Nikon. We have a few uh, items. We have a couple of teleconverters, uh, but we actually have a whole new camera system. And we're going to start with that. It's the Nikon Z5. That's it. This is, it is. Uh, this day I've been waiting for. We've been working on this behind the scenes for a while now, and we can finally talk about it. It's the fourth installment in the Z series of cameras, uh, the Z5. So uh, logically, this fits neatly under the Z6 in mm. terms of uh, price point feature set. Uh, but it is an entry-level full-frame camera. So again, it, 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 it sits between a bridge, as you mentioned earlier, yes. between uh, a Z50, which is our crop sensor uh, mirrorless camera, and the Z6. So we feel that it's going to find a sweet spot for a lot of people out there looking for not only a full-frame camera, be it mirrorless or, or, or DSLR, but also something that uh, appeals to people that are looking for mirrorless functionality, such as people that are shooting video and whatnot. Absolutely. So just kind of speak to the motivation. What was the inspiration behind developing a camera like this? Well, I mean, we really wanted to make something that's attainable to people. Um, you know, full-frame usually comes with a certain price tag that's uh, in mm -hmm. historically exceeded $2,000. Now, we've really uh, been able to come to a compromise of a balance of features, price point, um, as well as weight and size because of the new mount that we're able to deliver lenses that are compact, such as the new 24 to 50 that we'll talk about in a second. Mm -hmm. But as far as the body goes, our motivation is really to uh, entice people to look at full frame uh, in a way that they haven't before simply because of the price point and also because of the size and weight which we feel we've overcome that with the Z5. Totally. Um, let's talk about the lens and the mount a little bit. So the new lens on there is a 24-50 f4 to 6.3. Yeah, so this is, yeah, go ahead. And I'll be, I'll be honest, I thought it was a prime lens when I first saw it. So the fact that it's a zoom lens speaks volumes. And the reason why Jake thought it was a prime lens or maybe even a pancake lens is Almost. because it is so small. This yeah. is actually uh, one of the kit options that you can get with the Z5. It is sold as a body only if you wish. Uh, but one of the things that is going to make this so attractive is that there will be a kit option where you can save $100 on the lens um, and get it with this small, compact, light, but high performance 24 to 50. It's an f4 to 6.3 where as you know in a DSLR scenario a 6.3 lens would you know be very very dark inside of the optical viewfinder but with a mirrorless camera you overcome that because you have an electronic viewfinder Not a problem. where you can see your exposure bang on but also see your colors accurately so it takes a lot of the guesswork when you're shooting your photos and your video and it makes it that much more appealing to carry around with you all the time. You know, one of the reasons I've been uh, over the last year, the Z50 has kind of been my uh, carry around, walk around, sure. you know, uh, casual camera is because of the portability and the lightweightness of it. And, you know, people always say the best camera is the one that you have on you. I think now for people that want to they don't want to sacrifice um, the full frame viewing angle and you know the uh, the high ISO quality of full frame. Now have this option with this lens that will make that come true essentially. Yeah, and it carries over the Z mount from the Z6 and the Z7. I want you to kind of explain a little bit about the advantages of the Z mount to some people who may not know. Yeah, uh, and again, we came out with this mount in only two years ago. Right? Yeah, we're at. Uh, July 21st, I mean less than two years, I, we came out with it in August 2018 and in that time um, we really built this platform around the Z mount and the Z mount uh, gives us our engineers the ability to create lenses that we've never been able to create before on the F mount, namely because of two dimensions and that is the diameter which is the largest of all full frame camera systems out there right now and as well as the flange distance, that's the distance from the rear element to the sensor and that's the closest out of all the options right now for the full frame formats. It's uh, only 16 millimeters and this allows our engineers to create essentially optics where the light can hit the edges of the sensor with really, really good clarity. So much so that um, we, we actually boast that our lenses can be used and shot wide open. Something that typically on an SLR system, you would have to compress the aperture down a couple of stops before you start approaching maximum resolution. 
with the Z system, because of the way we've designed our mount, it gives us the advantage of not only creating lenses like the knocked 58 millimeter 0.95 with these ridiculously large apertures, mm. but also lenses that you can use without any guilt whatsoever shooting wide open and right. getting maximum resolution. Beautiful. All right, now let's talk about what's in the camera. Let's talk specs here, okay? I know people at home want to know. This is a full frame 24 megapixel sensor. Yeah. Megapixel sensor powered by the X Speed 6 processor. So that gives us the ability not only to go up to 24 megapixels, but shoot as high as 51,200 ISO with a high to 100,000 ISO as well. Great for your low light shots. And also, uh, this sensor takes full advantage of the optics that you put in front of it. This shot right here is actually oh, yes. done with the 24 to 50 millimeter lens. Again, no kidding. as an entry level uh, full frame camera and kit lens, quote unquote kit lens, this can give you deliver sh edge to edge sharpness. And in cityscapes like this, it's very hard to actually get sharpness right to the edge with these mm -hmm. point sources of light. This was shot with the 24 to 50. Is <laughs> that's very impressive. Now, also it has in-body stabilization. That's it. That's one of the the key things that we want to talk about with Z5. It inherits IBIS or our in-body image stabilization, our our VR terminology that we say vibration reduction, and five different axes. So when used with Z lenses, we can stabilize five different axes up to five stops of VR as well, depending on the lens. Some are actually even more than that. Mm. But um, when you use it with existing F-mount lenses with our adapter, you can also get stability as well. So people that are looking to get into a full frame system, you really got to take a look at the Z5 as one of the, one of the cameras that you should get um, not only because of the things that I just mentioned, but if you're an existing Nikon user and you have existing F-mount glass, those F-mount lenses actually become better when you adapt it to a, a system like the Z5 that has IBIS because you now infuse VR or stabilization into that lens. Absolutely, absolutely. And let's talk about uh, autofocus. How many points does this camera have? So this essentially inherits the same autofocusing system as the Z6. So it's 273 points that cover 90% of the frame. And this is a big deal for, uh, again, DSLR users that are accustomed to a cluster of cent center focus points. Yeah. Um, even doing things like rule of thirds might have been a challenge if you can't actually line up the focus point with your subject. Mm -hmm. Things do like composing your, your subjects off to the side of the frame. I think that's the way you framed me earlier, you know, off to the mm -hmm. side. Um, people want to do that with reliability. We can do that with the Z5 because we encompass 90% of the frame with those 273 points. But not only that, because they're contrast and, uh, and phase detect, we have this options now to get creative with our focus points. And one of those creative options is using face as well as eye detect, both for people as well as for your domestic pets. We have an option in here to do that as well, right out of the box. Um, we also have face detect in video, so making it very reliable. And speaking mm. of video, I just wanted to mention, while sure. I'm on that train of thought, I know I'm going to go, I'll let you talk in a second. <laughs> but um, um, it's great because people that use it for video um, don't have the noise typically associated with older optics and the engines that, that they have in them. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's right. Yeah. I mm -hmm. think it's great for someone that just wants to pick up the camera as, a, as an all-around um, uh, just a point and shoot, but also a you know, a walk around video camera because they can reliably get video with the reliability of the focus, but without the sounds of the motor when it's focusing. Mm, absolutely. Let's, let's talk about video because you brought it up. We got 4K, Ultra HD, 30P, and Full HD, 60P. Yeah. So those are uh, sub, some of the differentiation points between this and a Z6. People are going to be online comparing them. Um, we absolutely. do deliver <laughs> a 4K in this. There is a 1.7 times crop factor. So. Uh, that could be an advantage if you actually want to utilize your lenses to get a little bit closer. So it's utilizing uh, more of the center portion of the frame. Uh, we have an option for 1080 at 60 frames per second. If uh, people are looking for the differences between this and a Z6, Z6 has a, a few more of those uh, higher end video features such as the full frame uh, 4K as well as 120 frames per second for super slow motion. 10-bit uh, output and you know um, raw video as an option if they wanted to. But uh, in, in terms of the Z5, 
uh, it inherits a lot of the features that uh, videographers want, such as peaking highlights in three different colors. We have uh, zebra patterns for highlights. We have audio monitoring both through the LCD screen as well as through the ports on the side, which include not only a microphone jack, but a headphone jack. Again, important for this price range and category of camera that it does have those monitoring options there. Let's 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 go let's move to the body actually since you brought it up. What are, what are the inputs and outputs on the side there? So we have a uh, headphone jack, microphone jack both for uh, video purposes. We have a remote control port for legacy Nikon remotes. We have an HDMI mini, mini. port um, as well as a USB-C uh, connector here. Mm, okay, yeah. I want to go. I want to circle back to the USB-C. But what's on the other side? You have dual SD cards. That's slots. correct. Yeah. Um, thanks to the uh, the feedback of our, our constant feedback of the, the users on the internet. Uh, <laughs> in, in a very short period of time, you know, since we launched the Z6 and Z7 back in 2018, we've come out now with a full frame camera that incorporates the dual card slots that a lot of our users have been asking for. And this kind of rallies back us to the, the segment of users that want to use this camera. And I would say a lot of them might be event and wedding photographers that are looking for that redundancy. Mm. Um, also the price range and availability of SD cards make it perfect for people that have existing memory cards or you know they, they're, they're looking for those um, more inexpensive slower speed cards that they can use and they just want the redundancy or they want to dedicate one card to video and one for stills. Sure. Um, I mean, there's other functionalities with the dual card slots as well. You can dedicate one for RAW, one for JPEG. You can use them completely redundantly, and you can copy between cards. It's great if you have a runner and you want to send them off with your footage. Yeah, no kidding. Um, on that same topic, so, you know, wedding event type shooters are definitely going to appreciate the two SD card slots, but also has silent shooting as well. That's right. I mean, okay. You're thinking about wedding and events, you're thinking about what cameras you should get out there, and you're thinking about um, full frame. Uh, typically, people start at the full frame for those wedding and event photographers because of the low light that they want. But uh, they're curious what compromises you're going to have to tolerate you know, in an entry, entry point camera. Sure. This has the same EVF <laughs> resolution as a Z6, same amount of focus points. It now has dual card slots. It has uh, the video capabilities. Um, it has the flash uh, CLS adapter adaptability for our breadth of uh, speed light uh, cameras out there. Mm. Um, but as well, uh, sorry, you mentioned a point about uh, uh, event photographers. Oh, silent shooting, yes. right. Yes. So the silent shooting, again, is something that is impossible on DSLRs. So if people have wanted to not interrupt or draw attention to themselves, this is one of the reasons people look at a mirrorless format for the completely silent shooting that we have here at full resolution. So mm -hmm. something that in, in the past we might have only had a screenshot, uh, screenshot resolution may, might be HD, which is two megapixels. Now you get the full 24 megapixels and you can shoot um, completely silently with the electronic shutter. It's not actually a shutter going up and down to start the exposure. It's just the sensor turning on and off, mm. which virtually leaves no sound whatsoever. Yes, very cool. And let's talk about um some of the creative features built into the camera. There are uh, creative picture profiles that you can shoot in. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, the picture profiles that we announced when we brought up the Z6 and Z7, as well as the Z50 are mirrored in this camera now. So we have 20 creative picture controls on top of the traditional other picture controls of standard, neutral, landscape, portrait, etc. that we've always had in our Nikon cameras. We now have in the Z5 20 additional I would call them kind of Instagram type picture controls, creative, sure. you know, they really accentuate reds in certain, certain well, circumstances. It's nice to have that they something incorporate like that. vignetting. Yeah, something, something built in the camera just kind of saves you time on the back end. Rather than having to go into post and do all those tweaks, you can kind of just do it in the camera and then share. That's right. I mean, yeah. you, can, you want to do as much as you can in the camera to make much more use of your time. We also have incorporated things that people might not know about, like uh, multiple exposures. You can do that in here with a lot of flexibility in camera. Uh, I mean, here's an example of something that just came out of the camera. This is done by oh, wow. Andrew Hancock. And this here uh, uses a blending mode called, uh, I believe it's darkened. So whatever comes, whatever is the darkest pixel of uh, the, the, the exposures that you stack on one another will be shown. So you can, just like in Photoshop that has lighten mm. and darken, uh, you can do those, adjust those blending modes. So there's four different blending modes in the camera. You can actually take photos that you've previously shot 
and merge them in camera in our retouch menu. So we have an image overlay what? function. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> well, here, multiple exposure. Yeah. You usually have to take the pictures one after another in yes. sequence. Yes, typically. With the image overlay feature, you could take a picture that you took last week and overlay it with a picture that you took today in the same way really? as the multiple exposure that you'd normally have to take one after another. No kidding. Yes, so that's wow. some of the creative features that we've built in here. Very, very powerful. And I like it because it kind of, uh, you know, it, it gives you a little bit of randomness in there, you know, yeah. you, you don't know what to expect. Yeah, that's a neat little feature. I like that a lot. And another one is, is, is time-lapse uh, modes now. Can you, can you kind of break that down a little bit? Because you have two yeah. distinct features that can now be one. Yeah, there, this is one of the new features that it's exclusive to the Z5. And that is the ability not only to do time-lapse movies, which we've been able to do for some time now, but merge it with interval timer shooting. So for those of you not familiar mm -hmm. with Nikon terminology, interval timer shooting is the ability to, to just take pictures one after another and deliver you the high resolution JPEGs or RAW files. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you wanted to do time lapse of video, you have to choose one or the other. So uh, our cameras in the past have allowed you to shoot time lapse video, giving you the MOV file, but you'd ne not get the JPEGs. Mm, yeah. With the Z5, we now have the ability to do both at the same time. So you can actually do the interval timer, and at the end of your intervals, it will deliver to you the finished MOV file. So you get the best of both worlds. Yeah, really. So you can kind of, if you like a certain frame there, you can pull it out. Yeah, uh, yeah. exactly. You can pull it out in full resolution. The yes. other day I was shooting stars, and uh, if I were to just pull out a frame from the MOV, I might, if I was shooting in HD, I'd get a 2 megapixel file. If I was shooting in 4K, I would get an 8 megapixel file, but now I can get a 24 megapixel yeah. file from the interval timer while getting, while the, getting your 4K the, time the lapse. 4K time lapse. Yeah. Uh, so I want to circle back to the body of the camera. We have a 3.2 inch LCD display. That's correct. I mean, uh, it's a big display, but also the functionality I want to talk about, it's also a tilting touchscreen. So it's great for people doing street photography because, uh, and also video because they can view it at different angles. But the functionality that the touch incorporates, which actually is really, really good because of the sensitivity of it, is that you can activate your shutter with it. You can scrub through your images. You can pinch and zoom. You can uh, scroll through your menus, but you can also even scrub your videos. Oh, really? Yeah, with well, it. Well, that's going to be helpful, actually. So I can, yeah, sometimes I'll be like, where's this? I want to watch this part of the take. Let me just scrub through here rather than having to watch it on my LCD screen yes. and just scrub right through it. I mean, I have an iPhone. I've been using an iPhone for a couple of years now, and I feel that I can confidently say this on camera, uh, permanently etched in the interwebs, that the, the functionality of this is iPhone, iPhone-esque you know, in, in terms of just modern day 2020 functionality. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, I want to circle back now to, we talked a little bit about USB, the, the input on the side there. Now this can serve a lot of functions. Uh, it can charge and power the camera. That, I can't stress enough, is such a cool feature, especially in today's world, yeah. where people want to be using their SLRs are mirrorless cameras for web usage, for video usage, for prolonged usage. Um, that's going to require power that and time that exceeds the normal life of the battery. Um, what are your options at that point? You have to either buy an AC adapter, but in this case, this is the first product that we, we've announced that can actually not only charge the camera through the USB port, but because it's USB-C, the amount of power that we can deliver into the camera is enough that we can actually operate the camera indefinitely while the battery is inside without draining the battery. Wow. So the battery that comes with this now is an ENEL 15C battery, backwards mm. compatible with other models, but with this specific battery as well as the ENEL 15B, um, we can use it with USB, what we call USB power delivery. And USB power delivery is just what you saw there. I mean, as long as you're using a USB-C to USB-C on both ends, we can deliver enough power into the camera to literally power it indefinitely because even at its most taxing point, shooting 4K video, that consumes the most amount of power, we're delivering more uh, power into the camera that it's consuming. So we're good. You're not actually consuming any battery power and you can go indefinitely. Absolutely. And do we mention the EVF? Because I, I know how important that is to how optical viewfinders are important to DSLR shooters, but making the transition to a mirrorless EVF is not that too hard with this camera. Uh, it's not too hard, I, I, and I 
talking to the people that are used to shooting through optics, uh, they might be curious, you know, can we really adapt to an EVF? I think Nikon took its time and created the right EVF when they came out with the Z6 and Z7, and we've basically taken the same resolution, 3.6 million dots, and put it into the EVF of the Z5 so that we're give, delivering the best optics to people. And in, in addition to that, there are Nikon developed optics in front of the EVF, the actual screen inside the EVF that make that deliver really, really sharp results. Mm. Um, and not only that, but people that are used to shooting through optical viewfinders usually had to chimp afterwards and look at the back of their screen to analyze color, to mm. analyze exposure. Now you can do that all within the EVF. And honestly, take less shots, but better shots because your accuracy is gonna be right there. So again, if you're looking for a, a full frame camera today, uh, looking at the Z5 gives you those advantages that uh, in an optical world you just didn't have. I looked through it personally, the EVF is very nice. Yeah, I mean I like it. uh, it's, it's, it's been out there for a while now and people really enjoy those 3.6 million dots will come out for the Z6, Z7, practically the same one here in the Z5. Mm. Let's talk about um, sharing real quick because you can uh, link this up to your SnapBridge app and you can share over Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. That's right, so SnapBridge is an app that uh, Nikon makes both for the Android as well as the Apple iOS platform and that allows us to send images automatically to the camera that are timestamped, you can have GPS coordinates built in through the Bluetooth, but even through the Wi-Fi we can deliver the high-res versions, even the raw files and movie files. I was out uh, shooting a time-lapse, I sent my whole time-lapse to my phone, really, from the camera. So um, it is so handy to have the Wi-Fi capability in there. But what the Wi-Fi gives us as well is the ability to remote control mm. the camera from our phone, get a live view on our phone of what the lens is seeing, as well as trigger, start, and stop the video. So th I know this is a, a great feature for people out there shooting their own video. Um, they're by themselves, yeah, that's yeah, huge. Yeah, uh, they're by themselves. They just yes. want to see the way they're framed. You can do that with the app SnapBridge, as you mentioned. You can see a live view, and as well as adjust your exposure and touch on the screen to focus where you want. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we've missed. I think the last thing is a webcam utility. Yeah, so... Down the line? That's right. We So today we're also announcing a Nikon webcam utility. The specifics of it we're not divulging yet, but the exciting part is that we're going to have a beta available uh, in August sometime. And what this is going to allow us to do is take our Z cameras as well as uh, select DSLRs and use it to be recognizable through your computer through the USB. So. Uh, this is exciting news out there for people that want to get better. That's more relevant better. now than ever. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. So, I mean, we're using the word webcam, which usually has a connotation to it, but now you're super powering that webcam. Yeah, that's a pretty nice webcam you're holding. <laughs> <here>. <laughs> Very nice <laughs> webcam. Yeah. Right, so stay tuned for that. Uh, it will be based on the Windows platform for the beta, so stay tuned for more details. But we are announcing that is in development. Beautiful. Yeah. I will stay tuned. Um, let's talk about the kits. So you have uh, a few different kits here, one with the body alone and a couple of lenses. Right? Yeah, so one is the 24 to 50, which we have announced today. We've also announced one for the 24 to 200. So you can buy that as a hard kit. Uh, you can buy a body only option and you can buy one with this lens. To me, this lens right here is the exciting one that we've announced today, the 24 to 50, because it's so small, lightweight. Mm -hmm. As we mentioned before, it looked like a pancake lens at first, um, but uh, it delivers high resolution. So things that you wouldn't really expect from a lens of this price point, but mm -hmm. we can do that because of the Z mount. Beautiful. All right, now you didn't just bring the Z5 and a kit lens. You also have a couple of new teleconverters, which you also have. Why don't you walk me through those? Yeah, absolutely. So we announced today two new products, uh, a 1.4 times teleconverter as well as a two times teleconverter for the Z platform. So I have the 1.4 times here, as well as merged onto the 70 to 200, the two times teleconverter. Mm. And the great uh, news about this is that it's really a sign of our dedication to the Z platform as well as people that are looking for options that exceed what we currently deliver with the 70 to 200, which only you know maxes out at 200. Um, we do have a roadmap going forward that shows over the next two years, we are gonna be announcing over, well, uh, 
24 lenses by the end of 2021. So those lenses uh, are going to incorporate uh, various focal lengths, but you can see that there are some long telephotos in oh, there. Yeah. And, you know, we're not telling you which ones are compatible with the teleconverters right now. All we can say is that the 70 to 200 from our lineup that has been announced earlier this year that we feel confident will be uh, uh, s starting to be released for sale um, sometime in end of August in limited quantities uh, will be compatible with these teleconverters. And there's two things that, you, that stood out to me. Uh, it will maintain minimal focusing distance of any lens that you put them on. That's correct. It okay. maintains the minimum focusing distance. So that's key because um, with the 70 to 200, for example, when you maintain that minimum focusing distance, you effectively almost make it like a, a macro lens in that yeah. respect. It has a, almost a one to two reproduction ratio. Yeah. So uh, this makes it very convenient. If I was a wedding photographer, I, I would actually buy a teleconverter um, with the 70 to 200 because I can take detailed macro, uh, macro-esque shots Basically, yeah. with this. Um, we have examples on our website that show it, um, but also it gives you that extra distance. Also for wedding photographers, obviously they take portraits. Lots of portraits. The, the, what people don't realize is that teleconverters actually compress the depth of field. Mm -hmm. It actually gives you less depth of field effectively, you know, giving you more beautiful portraits. So, um, you know, with the two times teleconverter, even more so um, than it the 1.4. It also maintains all the focus points are still there. That's the big advantage of the Z system. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Traditionally, because of the light loss entering F-mount uh, glass or DSLRs for that matter, there's always compromises with teleconverters um, with the number of focus points that are available and the effective apertures that you can operate it at. With these Z teleconverters, here's two big advantages. You can utilize any focus point in the entire 273 point array. If I was using a Z6 or a Z5, I can use all those points edge to edge. Typically, you're relegated to one point in the middle by the time you hit F8 on a DSLR. But with mm. these teleconverters now in our new Z mount, you can actually shoot up to F11 and use any of those focus points. All right, and it also inherits the AF functionality as well as uh, stabilization. Mm. So mm -hmm. um, two big advantages with these teleconverters I'm really excited about. You mentioned the minimum focusing distance. Yeah. Um, the build quality of these mimics that of the S-Line series, so that is our Pro uh, Z uh, build quality. Um, as well, we have um, coatings on the front and back to wick away moisture and, uh, and dust and dirt and things like that. So uh, it's, it's, it's a coating that we apply in our, a lot of our different lenses that make cleaning a breeze. Okay, and we have the two times and the 1.4 times. That's right. Options. So we've 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 announced those today, and that again will be compatible with the 70 to 200 out of the gate. Um, more lenses to come, obviously. That's a lot of exciting new Nikon products. I got to say, the Z5 really that you got you hit it out of the park with this. That this is hitting a beautiful uh, demographic of people who you know it's like it's. It's a professional camera, but it could, it could operate like a point and shoot in a lot of ways because you have that auto feature and a kit lens like that. I mean, you could it's so lightweight and you could easily take it with you, but you still have the pro level quality in there at the same time. Which is why I think, uh, I mean, we mentioned it as a kind of a bridge between the DX segment um, and the FX segment. There's traditionally been a much larger gap between those. Yeah. It's, it's starting to become hybrid now, but I think because of the price point of this system, because of the uncompromised feature set, and because of this new lens, the lightweight and portability of it, those three things are going to make it so attractive for people, especially people that are migrating from an optical system from before, maybe mm -hmm. a DSLR. Yeah. I w like you said, it might even be attractive to uh, point-and-shoot users, even people coming over from smartphones for the first time that just want to get into photography mm -hmm. or video. So a lot of things uh, yeah. in this. And so in the, we're living in an age now where photo and video content creation are really blending together so much. And the camera like this is, is allowing you to make any kind of content really possible at such an accessible price point. Like I think that's really what's exciting about about this camera. And we continued to develop improvements and one thing that we announced today is firmware updates. So we're constantly improving our cameras. I did want to mention that uh, today that we announced firmware updates um, not only for the Z6, Z7 to be compatible with the uh, upcoming teleconverters, but we're upgrading say our, our Z50 that are going to have animal um, eye, uh, face and eye detect 
as well as improved functionality for the subject tracking. So I just want to mention that um, with these Z cameras, we've announced firmware updates that have uh, made not only the cameras uh, um, uh, functionality better, but uh, introduced other features as yeah. well. So um, we continue to do that, that commitment to improving current cameras and as we've done today with the Z50. Beautiful. Exciting stuff. I'm excited. Um, that's, that has really piqued my interest. Um, exciting products. I want to thank Nikon for uh, letting me into their secret bunker. I want to thank uh, Mark for giving me all this great information. And uh, thank you guys for watching. This is Jake with B&H. Just keep rolling.